name is Juan Cubillos Ruiz. I am a postdoctoral associate in medicine in the lab of Dean Laurie Glimcher. I'm a morning person. I really like to start my experiments very early in the morning. My favorite part every single day is when your experiments work. When you realize that your hypothesis was right, when you can test your ideas, that's beautiful. I'm working on developing new immunotherapies for ovarian cancer, and what we're trying to do is to harness the immune system's capacity to fight tumors. We're working on trying to start a clinical trial for ovarian cancer patients. Postdocs are an integral part of Walt Cornell Medical College. That's great. They are absolutely essential. We have over 300 postdocs working side by side in labs. They really help the principal investigator develop their research plans, and they are an integral part of the basic and translational research that's done at the medical college. Very much like being a resident in medicine, you need further training uh, to actually become uh, an academic scientist, and that's what this postdoctoral position in a lab enables you to do. It pushes you further towards independence. We can pursue all the crazy ideas that we have because there's a lot of resources. Six months ago, we had this crazy idea in collaboration with the Methodist Hospital about using nanotechnology to understand why some patients are resistant to HIV infection. So we submitted an application, a grant application to the Gates Foundation, and it was recently awarded. It was incredibly competitive. 30,000 people around the world applied, and only 90 received the award. Our group was one of them. And this would have massive implications for the epidemiology of HIV, and this could be actually translated to a, a functional cure. I was a graduate student here with Francis and then decided to stay. For my thesis, we've been looking at the development of fear and different types of fear learning and memory across development. Siobhan made what I think is one of the, probably the, the best discoveries in my lab, and there's no way I would have ever anticipated this discovery. What we've been looking at is the role of um, sort of this these prefrontal areas of the brain in regulating a fear response and how that actually changes uh, from childhood through adolescence and up to adulthood. And what we found is that both in young mice and adults, as well as in children and adult humans, they can extinguish these learned fears really well. But in the teenage or adolescent group, uh, that behavior seems to essentially be non-existent. This suggests that if you're in a very specific period during adolescence, there should be great and greater vigilance because it's possible that the fears that were acquired during that period of time actually will come back later. They sort of replicated the same exact thing behaviorally uh, with teenagers in the Sackler Institute. So it seems to be a very unique sensitive period for how fear is regulated. And no one else in the world, even after 40 years of studying mice, would have ever made that discovery. I'm really lucky to have been nominated as a 30 under 30, but I can think of so many people that deserve just the same. Being a researcher is not working nine to five. Most days it's glasses on, hair up, you know, gloves up to here. Postdocs make almost no money, but they get subsidized housing. Many of them live together on Roosevelt Island. The whole experience is an experience of growth while you're being mentored by a principal investigator. And I think all of these elements are essential for a successful postdoc to move on to the next phase of their career. My dream job is actually to get back into the brain tumor field, which is sort of why I came to grad school in the first place. We want to use all the knowledge and all the training that you have accumulated over the years to try to find a cure for a disease. My passion is trying to save a life. That's precisely what keeps me alive in science.